for the flattering introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I had uh, E.T. as a theme, as a film. Um, well, you can admit it's a nice film. It's one of the first films I saw in a, in a real cinema. When I was, a, I was a small boy, I went there with my mom. And you can imagine how surprised I was when, somewhat more than two years ago, we at Duo had a little friendly alien at our doorstep. It was not IT, uh, E.T., it was his brother, C.D. And we, uh, we welcomed him and uh, he took us to a nice adventure and we're still living that adventure. Okay, first something about Duo. Um, we're an education implementation service of the Ministry of Education, Culture and Science. I didn't invent that myself, but it's... What are we doing? Uh, we provide student loans. We provide students with money so they can live, so they can study. Um, and we, uh, we're spending some 4 billion euros there. Uh, much more money is spent in school finance, school buildings, teachers, all those kinds of stuff. Uh, something less known f uh, is that we're doing exam services. We're responsible for all uh, high school exams uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, and uh, in the last two years, we've also built uh, a digital exam system, uh, which is uh, rolled out uh, across high schools at the moment. And in two years, we'll, we'll be uh, taking the uh, primary schools also uh, for the CITO toots. And that's quite a challenge. Uh, it's 150,000 uh, uh, pupils doing an exam at the same time. Uh, with streaming video and audio and no errors allowed. So that's quite a thing we're up to. For another ministry, we are hosting the uh, child care register and uh, something new. The government wants to reduce the number of data centers from 64 to 4. And one of those four data centers uh, is done by us, is our data center. Uh, we're running it, we're hosting it. Uh, and there's yeah, a lot of development going on there. We're having about 2,700 employees for, and more than 500 IT staff. Okay, our journey. It's the forbidden word, but I use it anyway. Um, it started when the business was not satisfied two years ago. And it's similar to what we've heard already today. The quality was lacking, um, too much bugs, and we were also too slow. Uh, testing procedures in uh, quality acceptance, uh, quality assurance. Uh, well, we tested it, and then we went to production, and it still didn't work. How comes? Well, the environments, we're not the same. We're different. Configurations were different. Tools were sometimes different, networks were different. Um, and also, when we were testing in uh, the quality assurance environment, um, well, it took some weeks to get that environment ready. The programmer was already programming on uh, another project, wasn't there anymore. Uh, so then we uh, testing it, find some bugs, go back to the program, yes no time anymore so we have to uh, remodel our uh, uh, our testing process we have to speed it up so we sat down uh, we thought about what can we do well first we visited other companies we went to ing we went to cadasta cie bay ball.com uh, we saw a lot of uh, projects uh, with other companies and uh, finally, we came to the realization of our vision that we have to move to continuous delivery and DevOps. Well, we've heard a lot of about it today, and uh, we saw the model in the previous presentation. This is an other version of the same model, uh, I think. Uh, this has uh, six aspects, but we found this model very handy to communicate about, uh, about continuous delivery. Uh, and to set goals for ourselves to achieve. Um, six aspect, uh, aspects. Um, 
and you all have you have to do them all, but we focus first on these the more technical oriented uh, aspects. Why? Well, it's quite simple. Um, this vision was set out by our CTO, and uh, he, he can influence every, everything within IT. For the for example, the DevOps organization part, uh, he needs business that takes time to convince the business to go DevOps. And so it was much easier to start uh, with the technical aspects. And we were ambitious. We would like to reach to level five for the uh, provisioning, deploying and building. Uh, and uh, we would, reach, uh, would like to reach level three for reporting. And, uh, well, in process that looks like this, um, this was the old process. Um, we saw one from Germany too, it's, it's quite the same. Oh, my mic. Um, and we also had a very small part which was automated. The rest of the process was manual. And this is the process to provision infrastructure and deploy an application onto that uh, infrastructure. And what we wanted to achieve was this, a single process, no handovers between uh, uh, departments and the majority of activities automated. Okay, we had a few principles, standardize everything, uh, machines, infrastructure, test data, application configuration, everything. Because when you standardize it, you can automate it, automate it. And if you automate it, it's standardized. And um, yeah, we, we didn't know, uh, we weren't experts on automating these processes, so we asked partners, uh, Xabia and, and Red Hat. Uh, I have to mention Red Hat, because we, uh, thanks. Um, apart from introducing uh, continuous delivery in DevOps, we al also decided to uh, migrate to another tool stack. Uh, previously, we were using uh, WebSphere, IBM WebSphere, and uh, uh, on Microsoft, and we decided to move to uh, Red Hat Linux and JBoss EAP. Uh, the main reason was that we had uh, a big quarrel with IBM about licenses, pricing. Um, to put it in nice words, um, we found uh, IBM WebSphere not to be financially scalable. Um, most applications are technically scalable, but if you can't pay for the scaling out, well, it's financially not scalable. Um, and uh, JBoss is uh, better in that aspect, we found. Um, and we had a target, self-service, everything. Uh, developers can create, delete, and change their own infrastructure. Uh, they can deploy and undeploy their applications by themselves. Uh, and they, developers can monitor the applications and the infrastructure. So um, the, the, you know, the real technical stuff, uh, they, yeah, the real technical people don't have to uh, help them anymore. There's so one little lie uh, in there, the second point. Um, I wrote developers, it's uh, obviously the uh, operations guy. Um, okay, we introduced for ourselves uh, uh, an application uh, silo. An application silo is a container which contains all the uh, relevant infrastructure for, a, for an application. Um, well, currently it supports, of course, the JBoss EAP, uh, database connectors, database schemas, uh, resource adapters, and uh, within the next week, weeks, uh, also the uh, enterprise service bus and uh, uh, WebSphere MQ will be uh, added to that. So uh, a developer can provision and deploy these tools uh, from a self-service portal. Well, that's uh, quite a promise. Um, 
this is the process as we envisioned it and how we build it. Um, a developer goes to a self-service portal, uh, and the self-service portal is on top of a orchestrator. He makes a request. Um, the request launches all kinds of processes in uh, Puppet Lab. Uh, it's infrastructure as code, so we are using Git uh, for that. Um, and eventually, there is an application silo with a requested infrastructure. And this infrastructure is automatically uh, connected to identity management and to monitoring and logging. There is no logging or monitoring on the system itself. A developer can, of all logging is uh, in real time transported to a central uh, logging uh, instance. So if someone wants to see the logging, it's not on the machine itself. Um, it's in Kibana or Splunk. Um, the next step is, of course, deploying an application. Currently, we're using uh, XL Deploy. Uh, in the near future, we'll also be using uh, XL Release. And then uh, our application is uh, put on top of the application server and it's run. Well, that's a nice story, but uh, I have a, a small video. Um, of a real deployment uh, in the real environment. This is uh, our self-service portal which we built. And uh, here it goes. I hope. Yep, there it goes. Well, we're going to request an application silo. We have to enter a name and we have to and enter some other uh, stuff. We are putting this in a sandbox just for testing. And uh, now we're going to add a module uh, in JBoss application server in this case. We have to fill in uh, the network zone, the number of uh, JBoss application servers we're going to need, uh, heap size, some technical stuff. Uh, we have their development mode. That's really for developers, so they have some extra root access or whatever. Those are servers which are only allowed in, uh, in development uh, in the development environment. Okay, uh, up there there's the message where ha we have to wait for an email. And of course the email arrives. In the emails, uh, in the email uh, we found a, a few links with uh, Necessary information. Okay, we see that uh, there's a link. There's even a link to the application log. If you, if we would click that, uh, we would see the installation uh, logging uh, real time. And uh, now we're going to deploy an, uh, an application on this uh, server. The server has been automatically added to uh, Excel uh, uh, deploy. And now you're going to see the fastest deployment of XL Deploy ever. I've uh, made it a little faster. Now we're going to see if everything's okay. Yep, the application is deployed. Now we're going to see if the application is really working. Well, there it is. It's a, a, a very simple app, uh, application, um, but uh, it works. Um, this is a very short demo. I've, I've made it a little shorter. In rea reality, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, about six minutes. Um, now it was somewhat less than uh, three minutes. Uh, in the two years ago, um, this took from well two weeks to six weeks. Especially when you had to wait for a new server, it could take a long time. Um, and now we have yeah, made it 
much faster to, to a few minutes. Okay, um, that was the provisioning, deploying and building part. And, the and Well, we haven't seen it, but it works. The reporting part also works. Um, there, are some, there are some things left, um, especially DevOps, which in my opinion is the hardest thing to, to do. Uh, technical stuff is all relatively easy. Um, this is one of the early uh, organizational charts we uh, uh, we developed. Um, we have, of course, the DevOps teams with our operations and developers, and uh, we have a product owner uh, with a, a business-related uh, analysis team. That's why we call it uh, Biz DevOps. Um, because we have a, we see a strong relation with uh, with the business, and we uh, d define service teams, uh, the team which provides these infrastructure services is one of these service teams. They support the uh, develop uh, DevOps teams to uh, develop the, the software. We we have a, a continuous delivery team. Uh, we have an integration team for the ESB and that, uh, those kind of stuff, and security is also in one of those service teams. Well, how do we did we do that? Um, how did we? We uh, organized for all developers. We org for every team we organized awareness sessions, and then we had to, for every team we had a, a warming up to, uh, f from uh, two to eight weeks, and we hope uh, that in 2016 this year all teams will be organized as conform the biz DevOps model. And uh, we're talking about 40 teams, and we're halfway uh, at the moment. So that's uh, quite a lot of teams. Um, the area which we're a bit lagging is uh, automated testing. Oh. Um, we have some concepts working with uh, Cucumber. We have some older projects we, which are halfway in uh, automating testing, but that's not uh, currently not our uh, strong point. So a lot of uh, work to do. Lessons learned. Uh, well, I, I hated the term hit and miss because, well, we didn't really miss. We learned things. Um, well, one thing um, we really well we we have achieved it, but. We <laughs> It, it, it is. It still is hard. Find a high-ranking sponsor, especially for biz DevOps or for DevOps. Uh, you, it's a large organizational change. It's it's not easy. Uh, it's not an uh, a change which is uh, limited to the IP, IT department. Uh, you need the business for it. It's also it also affects the organization of the business. So you have to find someone who is uh, enthusiastic about uh, DevOps and also has influence on the business and can make the business eager to, to move to uh, DevOps. And that no, that's, that's difficult, that remains difficult. Uh, budgets are tight, uh, um, the business is mostly uh, eager to get functionality and well, they, they see this mostly as uh, IT, and uh, do your stuff, organize yourself the way you want, but don't bother us. Um, that's difficult, and that's we're, we're managing, but uh, it's a struggle now and then. Okay, and the other part is DevOps is fun. Uh, one of the things we did before we started with uh, the DevOps organization is do a pilot. We, we started with three teams. And we uh, um, we defined a, a number of performance indicators, and uh, it was just like one of those uh, uh, early rockets to the moon. It failed. We didn't have any liftoff. Uh, the performance indicators uh, were all red. Um, the result was miserable. Uh, one thing was green. Uh, the people were very, very, very enthusiastic. Even the business was very enthusiastic. Not because we had such a great result, but because we were working together. And we 
cut out the red tape and the walls and the we were re really working together and that drive um, well that 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 made the business eager, a, a little bit eager to to move to devops and it uh, helps to energize the the organization so that is what we learned other questions No questions. Oh, yeah, right. Right on board. Yeah.